Hi, this is Dean Deblois. I'm the writer, director, and executive producer of How to Train Your Dragon 2. So this sequence, which is actually the second one in our film, introduces Hiccup about as far away from Burke as he can get. It's meant to be a kind of a playful, fun sense of boundless freedom, which is really where Hiccup is in his life. He's standing on the cusp of adulthood uh, and being tasked with taking over for his father as the new chief of Burke. And yet he'd just rather be out here playing in the clouds with Toothless, finding new lands, mapping them, and uh, discovering new dragons along the way. We wanted it to be largely dialogue free and just driven by the music and so it has this great pulsing, energetic and euphoric sound which is brought to us by Yonzi, an Icelandic singer-songwriter who is also the front man of Sigaros. I've done a couple films with Yonzi and uh, we actually asked him to do the end credit song of the first film but this time around we thought it would be fun if he and John Powell were to collaborate on a couple of pieces that would be baked into the film. This is the first of the two and it's called Where No One Goes. Hiccup's been busy in the last five years designing uh, all sorts of cool little pieces of equipment that he wears all over himself and he's redesigned Toothless's saddle. So everything's much more aerodynamic and he carries on him all of the tools that he uses to map new lands. We wanted to mask his his features so that we could reveal them toward the end of the scene and give him kind of a superhero quality as, as he's uh, testing the world's first flight suit. It's meant to be a little rusty, but the idea was that they could be independent and yet together. And by locking Toothless's tail, they could glide alongside one another. It seems graceful and beautiful and hopefully is has this kind of kinetic euphoric feel to it but being that it's in the early stages of its development it also ends in a lot of uh, <laughs> scuffle and and uh, mishap as we see toward the end of the scene oh, no! oh! the camera work in this film is actually inspired by a lot of live action cinematography so we always try to make it feel as kinetic and handheld as possible there's a feature that we wanted which was to have the sense that there's an operator who can overcompensate or, or try to follow the characters but not quite get them all of the time and it creates a believable sense of real world physics that makes our animated world seem that much more credible. We, we gotta work on your solo gliding there bud. That uh, locked up tail makes for some pretty sloppy rescue maneuvers, hey? And the whole scene builds toward the big payoff which is to reveal what Hiccup looks like these five years later. We're very careful to keep the features that make Hiccup so winning as a character. and That includes his slight build and gangly, kind of adorable, dorky quality. Looks like we found another but with one, it, huh? we wanted to give a sense of an aspirational hero who's coming into his own. Oh, what? Do you want an apology? Yeah.